Yeah, good morning, uh, this is uh, Professor Krishna Kaliyappan uh, from Department of Chemistry, IIT Bombay and welcome back to the NPTEL course or classics in total synthesis. Uh, so today what we will do, uh, we will talk about uh, total synthesis of uh, steroids, uh, particularly one of the steroids called progesterone and the next few days we will continue to discuss uh, total synthesis of few more steroids. So when we talk about steroids, uh, you know the basic skeleton present in steroids has 4 rings, 3 of them are 6 member rings, okay, you can see 3 A, B, C, they are all 6 member rings and the D ring is 5 member. Okay. The numbering of the steroid skeleton starts from the A ring, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. First you number fully the A, B ring, then go to C ring 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay. So you can see there are 17 carbon atoms now. Then there are 2 angular methyl groups, one at carbon 13 and other at carbon 10. Okay. Most of the steroids have this 2 angular methyls at carbon number 10 and carbon number 13. Okay. So to give you an example, so this is a reduced version of cholesterol. Okay. Cholesterol has a double bond here. Cholesterol has a double bond here. So, if you look at this, you can see as I mentioned, you have 2 angular methyl groups and the A, B ring is transfused, likewise B, C also transfused and C, D also transfused and it has a long side chain. Okay. So, this is the basic skeleton of most of the steroids. Okay. So the A, B, C, D is common. But in some steroids, you will see two angular methyl groups at C10 and C13. Okay? And usually these substituents, that is the angular methyl groups are beta, beta means above the plane. Okay? And what are the well known steroids? Okay? So this is cholesterol okay, which we all have and if you introduce one more double bond, okay? so one more double bond and the side chain also, okay, there is a change in the side chain, then this is called ergosterol, okay. this is called ergosterol. And if you have only the extra double bond compared to cholesterol, this is called dehydrocholesterol, dehydro that means you removed one hydrogen, okay. dehydrocholesterol. From dehydrocholesterol, okay, one can prepare vitamin D3. This whole structure is called pre-vitamin D3. The pre-vitamin D3 is obtained from dehydrocholesterol, okay, dehydrocholesterol by an electrocyclic ring opening reaction. Okay, you can see this is a cyclohexadiene and this is hexatriene. Okay. The electrocyclic ring opening of dehydrocholesterol, you get pre-vitamin D3. And this pre-vitamin D3 becomes vitamin D3 by 1,7 hydrogen shift. By 1,7 hydrogen shift, pre-vitamin D3 under photochemical condition gets converted into vitamin D3. See all these are useful steroids. Then we also have other sex hormones, for example, male sex hormones, testosterone. So the testosterone has a E known in the A ring, E known in the A ring with a hydroxyl group in C D ring. Then there are some derivatives of that. So the dianobol where you have extra double bond and the extra methyl group in C D ring and trenbolin you can see you have two more additional double bonds and then angular methyl group is missing and nandrolone is not having an angular methyl group at C10 and boldenone has only one extra double bond and androstene dione that means the hydroxyl group in D ring is oxidized. These are all derivatives of testosterone. Okay? These are all derivatives of testosterone which is 
the male sex hormone. Then coming to female sex hormone and its derivatives, estrone is the female sex hormone. Here the A ring is aromatic, A ring is aromatic and you have a hydroxyl group at 3 position. Now since the A ring is aromatic, the hydroxyl now is a phenolic hydroxyl. Okay. And the D ring you have a ketone okay, that is called estrone and if you reduce the ketone it is called estradiol and if you put one more hydroxyl group in D ring this is called estriol. Then if you add a triple bond to the ketone here, if you add a triple bond to this ketone on estrone then you get ethanyl estradiol. So these are all you know. Uh, potential oral contraceptive. So then we have progesterone, okay. the progesterone again it is not aromatic. So you have cyclohexenone and in the D ring instead of having a ketone or alcohol directly attached you have acetyl group attached to the D ring. Okay. So this is a major difference between progesterone and other female sex hormones. So based on this several oral contraceptives were synthesized these are all you know synthetic compounds okay you can go through this uh, leisurely so these are all well known well known in the literature and most of them use birch reduction as the key reaction as you can see here there is no angular methyl group that means they all start from the aromatic compound and then do birch reduction followed by hydrolysis to get this compound. Okay, so the starting material obviously has to be estrone. From estrone, they make all this oral contraceptives. Then we have corticosteroids, and the basic unit is cortisol. Okay, again, you have the same A, B, C, D ring, but you have an additional hydroxyl group here. You have additional hydroxyl group in C ring. Normally, you in other steroids, you don't see a functional group in C ring. Okay, only in corticosteroids you will see a functional group in C ring. And in the progesterone you had COCH3, now it is COCH2OH and also another OH attached to the same carbon in D ring. Okay. And in prednisolone okay, you have additional double bond in A ring and texamethasone you can see a very important group fluorine, fluorine in B ring and you also have additional methyl group, okay. Texamethasone uh, during the COVID treatment uh, uh, initially people were given texamethasone, so this is the structure. And betamethasone is an ointment normally uh, given for uh, skin treatment, okay. Generally if uh, people have psoriasis or related diseases, so they give uh, betamethasone which you can apply. So that is also related to uh, dexamethasone only thing is you have beta methyl group. Okay. Then budesonide um, this is a very interesting steroid normally given for people with asthma they can inhale taking this budesonide. So all these are very very important steroids which are given for various treatments. Okay. Then we have bile acids. So the bile acids the main difference is the A B ring junction. If you look at all other steroids which we discussed the A B ring junction is trans whereas in bile acids the A B ring junction is cis. So if you have 1, 2, 3 hydroxyl, 1 carboxylic acid it is called cholic acid and if you have 2 hydroxyl. A 1 and then 2 A and C ring then it is called deoxycholic acid and if you have same 2 hydroxyl but in A and B ring then this is called chino deoxycholic acid and if you have only 1 hydroxyl that 2 in A ring this is called lithocholic acid. Okay, there are 4 bile acids which you should remember and when you talk about conformation Cholesterol that is of reduced form of cholesterol have trans ring junction, isn't it? 
So, the most stable conformation of cholesterol is this, this transdecaline, transdecaline and again transhydrindine system. Whereas in cholic acid, as I said the AB ring is cis, the AB ring is cis. So, you can see this is a cis decaline and this is a trans decaline and this is trans hydrindine. Okay. So, only AB ring is cis fused and all other three rings are trans fused. Okay. So, with this brief introduction, so now let us see how steroids are synthesized in nature. Okay. Before that, before steroid, let us start with biosynthesis of simple terpenes, okay. monoterpenes, sesquiterpene, diterpene, then go to steroids. So, normally if we have a double bond like this and a carbocation which is within the reachable limit, then the double bond can try to neutralize the positive charge and generating a ring as well as a carbocation. So, this is how in nature cyclization takes place to form a ring. Somewhere carbocation is formed or you have a good leaving group, once the leaving group is ready to leave the double bond can migrate and generate a carbocation. So, this is the basic principle in many terpenes and steroid biosynthesis. So, if you talk about C10 then they are called monoterpenes, if you talk about C15 that is 15 carbon atoms, they are called sesquiterpene and if you talk about C20, they are called diterpenes and C30, we can talk about steroids. For all this, there is a starting material in nature. Okay. So, geraniol, if you start with geraniol, then that can lead to all monoterpenes and if you start with farnesol, that can lead to all sesquiterpenes. And if you use geranyl geraniol, then that can lead to all diterpenes. Likewise, if you start with squalene, that can lead to all steroids. That is how all the biosynthesis are you know working. What is the basic building block? If you look at uh, terpene or steroid, the basic building block is isoprene. Okay. The basic building block is a 5 carbon unit called isoprene. But in nature, isoprene is in the form of isopentenyl pyrophosphate. Isopentenyl pyrophosphate. This is pyrophosphate. So it's a good leaving group. Basically, it is a good leaving group. So that you know, if we have geraniol, and then this is geraniol pyrophosphate. So this is the starting material in nature for making all monoterpenes, and this is. Farnesyl pyrophosphate, you can see there are 15 carbon atoms. So, this is the starting material for sesquiterpenes. This is C20 geranyl geraniol, and that is the starting material in nature for diterpene. This is squalene, which has a 30 carbon unit. Okay. So, that is the starting material for all steroids. Okay. So, first let us see how these are all made in nature, then we will talk about synthetic approach to steroids. Okay. So, when you talk about monoterpenes, there are many monoterpenes, I am just I am giving only few examples, limonin, carbon, polygon, menthol, camphor, I am sure all this you will know, okay. you might have heard limonin, carbon, polygon, menthol, camphor, even citronellol you should know, geraniol you should know, neral you know. These two the philandrine and ferrolaldehyde you may not know. Okay. So, these are all you know reasonably well known monoterpenes. Why I am insisting uh, these monoterpenes are important because they are used as chiral starting material for synthesis of several natural products. Okay. Most of them, most of them are chiral okay, except uh, neural and geraniol, most of them are chiral and they are used as starting material for synthesis of many other natural products. And some more monoterpenes, you know, alpha pinene and beta pinene. And if you do allylic oxidation of alpha pinene, you get verbenone. 
and then if the allylic oxidation takes place at the methyl group this is called mirtinol the nopal is a homologated compound of alpha pine then you also have three carine and two carines all this you see they are monoterpene okay how monoterpenes are synthesized in nature what is the biosynthetic pathway as i said the starting material in nature for monoterpene is geraniol pyrophosphate so that means this is a good living group this is a good living group which means that you can generate a carbocation like so this double bond which is very close to this can migrate and then pyrophosphate can move that will lead to this tertiary carbocation okay so once this tertiary carbocation is formed there are many further rearrangements possible okay so if if you are if a proton is lost then you get limoni this is called limoni and here once the carbocation if the double bond here the double bond here neutralizes a positive charge then you get this intermediate and this intermediate one can convert later by loss of proton to give alpha poi alpha pinene or beta pinene if exocyclic double bond is formed that is beta if endocyclic double bond is formed then it is alpha pinene okay then direct attack of water will give you alpha terpene direct attack of water to neutralize the positive charge you get alpha terpene if the hydrogen migrates if the hydrogen migrates then you get another tertiary carbocation okay so that will lead to the formation of three carines and two carines okay and here the double bond when it migrates there are two possibilities one the formation of this pinene precursor other one the formation of camphor precursor once you have this carbocation water can attack followed by oxidation it can give camphor okay then simple loss of proton simple loss of proton will give alpha terpene so basically if you look at all this biosynthesis the starting material is geraniol pyrophosphate okay that is for monoterpene for sesquiterpene as i said farnesyl pyrophosphate is the starting material okay again the same way the pyrophosphate goes out and then you get a six membered ring with a carbocation okay so now what can happen this hydrogen can migrate if that migrates the carbocation comes to the six membered ring okay carbocation comes to the six membered ring then you have a double bond here okay this double bond can neutralize the positive charge if that happens you get a spiro system you get a spiro system and this will lead to a range of sesquiterpenes they are called acorines okay and if depends on which double bond which side of the double bond neutralizes a positive charge if this carbon neutralizes that will lead to a sesquiterpene type called acorines and if this carbon neutralizes that will give another class of sesquiterpenes called chamigreens okay so all these start from the same starting material now you have another double bond isn't it that double bond can neutralize this that double bond can neutralize the positive charge that will give you this intermediate now loss of proton will give a sesquiterpene called cedrine okay please remember so this is these two are the key intermediates okay key intermediates that can lead to okay all mono sesquiterpenes these two are the key intermediates that can lead to all sesquiterpenes okay what is important is when you do cyclization when you do cyclization whether the stereochemistry of the double bond will be preserved or not according to stark and eschen mosher whatever geometry your olefin has before the cyclization that will be preserved okay if you have a trans olefin olefin then after cyclization what you get is transfused ring 
and if you have cis olefine you will get cis fused ring. So, this is what they, they write you can see the center one is a trans double bond can you see it is a trans double bond. Now, after cyclization it forms a trans decaline system. Basically the trans double bond geometry is preserved in the final product. For diterpene you have to go to geranyl, geranyl, geranyl pyrophosphate and again the same way it can protonate and then you form the AB ring. Now the carbocation is here then loss of proton will form a double bond then what happens the double bond will attack and this double bond will come and then pyrophosphate goes and you get this intermediate ok. The next step is very interesting the hydrogen from here is lost and you get a internal double bond ok you get an internal double bond. Now this internal double bond ok another internal double bond is formed because of conjugation through this mechanism ok and that leads to a natural product called abetic acid that leads to a natural product called abetic acid and this is the key transformation and from here one can think of converting this abetic acid into many diterpenes many diterpenes. From diterpene now we will move to steroid. So, steroid it start with squalene and squalene epoxidase enzyme epoxidizes the terminal alkene ok. Now, the protonation takes place once the protonation takes place the epoxide will open and then series of double bond migration will take place that will lead to this carbocation. You can see the epoxide opens then this double bond migrate, this double bond migrate, this double bond migrate and you get a carbocation. So, now what will happen again in type reaction will take place, in type reaction will take place to neutralize the positive charge. So, that will give you steroid skeleton with the double bond with the side chain you can see a side chain. But what you do not need is you have a methyl group here and this methyl group should go to this position. So, basically what you have to do again you have to protonate this carbon. You protonate this carbon ok then you get a carbocation ok. Then what will happen series of migration takes place first this hydrogen will migrate this hydrogen will migrate followed by migration of this hydrogen then methyl group this methyl group and loss of proton you get this compound and this is called lanosterol ok. Then series of oxidation decarboxylation takes place to give cholesterol ok. The key intermediate formed in the steroid biosynthesis is lanosterol from lanosterol all other steroids are formed ok. So, why I thought I should give a brief introduction to uh, biosynthesis of steroids before that biosynthesis of terpenes is important uh, from the synthetic point of view whether can we follow what nature has been doing. So, that we can prepare the starting material and try to replicate what nature is doing ok. So, that we can call it as biomimetic synthesis you are just trying to mimic what nature is doing ok. So, there was one synthesis of progesterone reported long time ago more than 50 years ago by W. S. Johnson where he exactly followed the principles adopted by nature to make progesterone ok. So, that is why we call it as biomimetic synthesis. So, here the retrosynthesis is like this. So, when you have progesterone this can be obtained from this 5 membered ring ok. How if you cleave this double bond you get a diketone that is 1 5 diketone this 1 5 diketone upon aldol reaction can give progesterone. 
okay. Now how you can get this 5 member ring? So this is where he wanted to use this pyrometric reaction. So here if it forms a carbocation, the tertiary alcohol upon protonation you get a carbocation, then this bond will migrate, this bond will migrate, this bond will migrate, this bond will migrate, then water will attack that will give you the corresponding keto. Okay. And this is how you know the chair like transition state, chair like transition state, chair like transition state. Okay. So basically what you need to do is you have to prepare this tertiary alcohol. How you can prepare this tertiary alcohol? Okay. This preparation of tertiary alcohol is quite easy okay. and if you have ketone then you can prepare the Grignard addition will give the tertiary alcohol. And this 5 membered ring can be obtained from this diketone. Okay. This diketone just aldol reaction will give 5 membered ring followed by Grignard addition you will get the tertiary alcohol. And this can be obtained by a Wittig reaction. Okay. If you break this bond you can, you can generate you have the Wittig salt and this aldehyde. Okay. And this Wittig salt can be made from this corresponding bromide. So the bromide is used for making the Wittig salt and this furan, furan normally as you know you can make it from 1,4 diketone. So if you treat with acid furan will open up and then you get corresponding 1,4 diketone that in C2 if you protect it with ethylene glycol you get this come. Then the other aldehyde can be obtained by Claisen rearrangement. And before that this can be easily obtained from 2 methyl furan and then you generate lithium species and conjugate with this 1, 3 what is a 1, 4 dibromo combo. The other aldehyde can be easily prepared if you look at this aldehyde it is alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So gamma, delta and saturated aldehydes normally you know prepared from allylic alcohol via Claisen rearrangement. Okay. This is called Johnson ester Claisen rearrangement. So you can get this aldehyde from this. You will get an ester that ester can be converted into aldehyde. So now that can be prepared from this allylic alcohol and that allylic alcohol can be prepared from this alpha beta and such aldehyde and the Grignard reagent. So it is a very very simple retrosynthesis and the synthesis started with this aldehyde and you do the Grignard reagent in THF you get the allylic alcohol which is required for the Johnson Claisen rearrangement. So for that you treat with triethyl orthoformate with catalytic amount of propionic acid very important you cannot use excess otherwise it will form corresponding ester. Okay. Very very catalytic amount of propionic acid and it forms this intermediate. Okay. Once you have this intermediate as you can see here this is a 1,5 diene it can undergo the Claisen rearrangement to give the corresponding actually ester. That ester is reduced and oxidized to get the corresponding aldehyde. Okay. In two steps after this you have to reduce with LAH1 then oxidize under one condition you get the aldehyde. Once you have this aldehyde then the other side can be easily prepared from 2 methyl furan treat with butyl lithium and 1,4 dibromo butane and monoalkylation takes place. Now if you treat with PTS paratolivine sulfonic acid it opens up the furan to give 1,4 diketone and then 1,4 diketone is in situ protected by ethylene glycol, in situ protected by ethylene glycol. So with this now you have the bromide and then using Finkelstein reaction you exchange that with uh, sodium iodide and then triphenylphosphine you make the Wittig salt. Now treat with n-butyl lithium you generate the elide then add this aldehyde and you get this alkene. So you get a mixture of trans and cis and where trans is 97. Okay. So once you have that now remove the ketal, remove the ketal and then treat with sodium hydroxide you get the aldol product. Okay.
the cycle of pentene. So what is left now? You have to add the Grignard reagent. So you can add either Grignard or you can add methyl lithium to get the tertiary alcohol. Now you treat with acid, okay, trifluoroacetic acid and quench with this compound. Okay. So as I said, we hear protonation will take place, this double bond will migrate, this double bond will migrate, this double bond will migrate, then triple bond will migrate, then water will attack, you get the corresponding keto. Okay. Now from here to progesterone is very simple, ozonolysis will give the diketone, okay. ozonolysis will give the diketone. Now aldol reaction, okay. simple aldol reaction will give you the corresponding natural product that is progesterone. So here the advantage of this method is just follow the nature where you can carry out the polyene cyclization under acidic condition and followed by ozonolysis and aldol reaction one can get progesterone. So this is one of the classical synthesis of uh, one of the steroid molecules called progesterone. In subsequent lectures we will discuss about uh, more steroids and more total synthesis of steroids. Okay. Thank you.